All right, so um, just to start, I want to tell you guys a story. Throughout my whole life, um, I had a big problem. And the problem was that I couldn't gain any weight. Um, it doesn't matter what I ate, doesn't matter what time I ate or what kind of food I ate, it was virtually impossible for me to gain weight. You know, and that's what you call the skinny problem. All the skinny people that can identify with that say, amen? Amen. Amen. All right, cool. There are people there that could relate to me. And I know that some, of, some of you guys, you guys are just like, what, Pastor Billy, what are you complaining about? You know, I wish that I, I, I wish I had that problem. If I had your body, I would make sure your body will expand. But hear me out a little bit. For a guy growing up, right, um, it's a little emasculating when you're getting harassed by girls all the time <laughs> and they're asking you how much you weigh all the time you start getting a little bit insecure. You know, for example, in college, uh, my freshman year, I weighed uh, under 120 pounds. And the reason why I could share that with you guys now is because I'm a little bit secure. But back then, if you were to tell me, I would tell you I'm, a, I'm above 125 pounds because, you know, I gained, I add five pounds because I was a little insecure. And there was this one girl that would keep, that kept bothering me. It's like, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? And I would never tell her. And then what, at one point, I got so fed up. I said, listen, <laughs> you guys know this story. <laughs> listen, if I told you how much I weigh, you'd be jealous. <laughs> and I know that's a little messed up. I know I was a real jerk for saying that, but uh, God's working in that area of my life. That's why I need Jesus. But that's been my issue my whole life. I would go to buffets, and I'll be so proud because I gained three to four pounds after I ate, only, only to feel disappointed the next day because I'm back to where I am. It only happened after 28 years. I think my metabolism got a little slower with a relationship where I finally got to expand just a little bit. Now I'm normal. I actually have a little belly now, and I'm actually proud of it. My roommates tell me that I flaunt it all the time. And um, I think in the same way, when it comes to our lives, I think a lot of us experience um, moments where uh, we face problems, issues, and um, difficulties where it seems almost impossible to overcome. Where we feel like there's a desired destination where we want to be, but it feels way too big compared to the current state we're at. And as a result, it almost feels like we're stuck. It almost feels like we can't overcome. It almost feels like we're limited in the things that we can do. And a lot of times for many of us that experience that or experience these impossible situations in our lives, the first thing that usually happens is just overwhelming doubt. You know, we doubt ourselves. We doubt the things around us. Uh, we doubt even God. And we wonder if we could come out of it. And what happens is we fall into this lens of doubt where it's all about pessimism and negativity. And all we see are the problems and the issues we have, but we can't see the solution beyond it. And unfortunately, what happens is if we remain in this uh, area of doubt, what happens is we fall into the spirit of defeat, where we say to ourselves, what's the point? It's the attitude and the postures that says, um, why even bother moving forward? Why even trying? And as a result, what we find ourselves doing is just giving up, just settling down and compromising in the areas that we're at, whether it's in our journey of faith, whether it's in our careers or in our relationships, whether it's life or it's faith, uh, we fall into the spirit of defeat, and we're limited in the things that we do. You know, and the good news about this, about the situation that we're at, that the good news of the gospel says that uh, in Matthew 19, it says, with man, this is impossible, Jesus said, but with God, all things are possible. It reminds me of this great cultural theologian, uh, Kevin Garnett, when he won his first champion, NBA championship where he says, anything is possible. And I think he was referring to Matthew 19 when he was saying this, where, <laughs> where anything is possible in Christ. And so what I'm saying is this, is, um, and we're in this story, uh, series called the Recovery Series, and today what I want to talk about is the recovery of faith. And what faith does is helps you see the possibilities in the, in the places of impossibilities. And what faith does is helps you see that even when you put your trust in God, that God is bigger than the circumstances and the situations or even the possible places that you're at and brings a place of hope and a faith that you can overcome. And so that's what I would like to talk about today. So um, today I'm going to answer this question is how does faith 
help us um, see the possible and the impossible. And we're going to go to Matthew 17 and we're going to find out. And as we turn to Matthew 17, uh, this passage is all about uh, an impossible situation. First, you see a, a, a father and a son, and the son is uh, possessed by a demon, which is scary in itself. And you see the symptoms of what it looks like epilepsy. And you see the condition of the son of having uh, this issue or this problem or this captivity his whole life. And you almost feel the desperation of the father and the impossible scenario that he's experiencing day in and day out of his life. You also see an impossible scenario of the disciples where they try to free this boy from the demon only to see themselves fail and confronted with a wall and a limit where they experience some type of impossible scenario. And here you see Jesus with his three disciples coming down after coming from vacation because he comes from a mountain top experience only to experience um, an impossible situation and impossible disciples that he has to deal with. And you could see that frustration happen, as you see in verse 17, where Jesus says this. He says, you unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? And then here is the transition where Jesus turns something impossible to possible, where he says, bring the boy here to me. And verse 18 says, Jesus rebuked the demon, and he came out and the boy, of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now the question is, what did Jesus really mean when he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, you can move from here to there. You know, when uh, some people read this, they think that Jesus is being actually literal here. You know, that if you have a faith small as a mustard seed, you could actually literally move a mountain. But what Jesus is talking about is uh, not literal but figurative. It's what you call a hyperbole. You know, hyperbole means that you're exaggerating a, um, a statement to bring a point. You know, because really, what purpose is there if you had, if you're able to have the ability to just move a mountain from here to there, it just serves no purpose at all. And here, what Jesus is saying um, is that there is, it's a figurative meaning about something of a deep significance and truth. Because in the Jewish thought, right, when they saw a mountain, right, they actually believed that mountains uh, actually were rooted underneath the ground. They were anchored underneath the ground. So in their mind, the mountain was the most stable thing that they could understand and see. So when Jesus said that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed uh, and that you can move a mountain, what Jesus is saying is that if you have faith, faith is actually the factor in moving most of the impossible and most difficult obstacles that you have in your life. In other words, faith is a factor that is involved in here. And that's why when you look at this passage and you look at the story, Jesus is a little bit frustrated with the disciples because of their little faith. You know, they had faith, but they had very little of it. And what you have to understand is this whole demonic stuff that uh, the disciples were dealing with, it's not that this was anything new that they were afraid of. They were actually spending time with Jesus. They saw him um, heal, being healed. They even partook in exorcisms. But the problem was with their faith is what they focused on. They were so used to their own experience. They were so used to their own abilities. They were so used to... Um, in, in essence, they were so full of themselves, they lost their focus in God. And this is the issue of faith, is what you're putting your focus on. For example, um, some of you guys heard the story before, but um, Henry and I uh, decided that, well, he let me to do surgery on his foot. And what happened was that Henry actually had uh, a 10-year wart on his foot. And he was crazy enough to let me do surgery on that foot. And to all those who are doctors here and to all those who are um, um, in med students, don't worry, I had my certification. They're called YouTube and WebMD. <laughs> I researched a lot. And I did my, and I did, uh, I, removed, I started removing the wart uh, on Henry's foot. And let me tell you, 
<laughs> it was a crazy, crazy situation. Every day for like, I think probably like three weeks, we were scraping it off little by little. And then you saw our roommates, you saw Pastor Sam looking at us, he's like, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is, uh, pa- Henry actually eventually went to a doctor and he, they just scooped it all out in one shot. And so the reality was actually, I was actually doing the right thing. It, would, it just would have taken me years rather when a doctor would just do it in like one day. <laughs> and you know, the, and the point of the story is the fact that it's not, it's not the issue of uh, removing the wart, it was who was removing the wart. And you know, in the same way, that's exactly what faith is. Faith is putting your trust in who. You know, like for example, when you're sitting there right now, right in your seats, you had faith uh, that, your, that the chair would uh, support your weight. You had faith on your weight. Because a lot of times when people think of faith, they think it's a belief. You know, it's something that you understand, something that you acknowledge of existence. You know, but there's some things that you acknowledge and what you understand as existence, but something that you don't trust. Faith is an, act, is an active posture of trust. It's a confidence of putting your, your, a, a surrender of your life into someone or something else. And in this case, it's God. And true faith emerges and it comes out when you put your faith in someone like God or something of everything that you can't understand and sometimes even things that you cannot see. And that's the development of faith. So when it comes to the issues of our, our development of faith and it comes to the places of the impossible situations in our lives, a lot of times what happens is we put more faith in ourselves and our own abilities and our, and our own ways that limit us from really seeing the bigger issue and seeing that big, God is actually bigger than the, than the problems that we have. And, as, and for those who are so full of ourselves and full of pride or self-righteousness and our ability, we can't see beyond the problems that we have and the things that we see. Today, what I'm saying is that what, help, what, what faith helps us understand is help to see the bigger than ourselves and trust in a person that's big, a bigger God that helps us overcome the big problems that we have. So the question is, how does faith help us bring the impossible to something that's possible? And this is the first point. By putting your trust in the one who can make the impossible possible. And the thing is, is there are certain places in our lives, right, where we are feeling that right now. And I, think, I believe that for some of us, it's because we've been limiting God and, work, and allowing God to work in those places in our lives. Today, I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will show you those places, those areas where you're feeling that limit, where you're feeling that uh, impossibility. And perhaps it's time where we turn and we actually surrender and add a little bit more trust in God to see how big he might be in our lives. And for some of us, this is a great opportunity because in the limits and in the possibilities that we have, it's always a great opportunity to see a big God in our lives. God always uses those situations and circumstances in our lives to make um, our eyes see how big he really is. So by putting your trust in the one who can make the impossible possible, that's the first point. Let's move on. So verse 19 says this, When the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, the question is, is why Jesus compares faith to a mustard seed. Now, if you're not sure what a mustard seed is, um, a mustard seed is actually one of the smallest seeds in all the earth. It's actually one of 64th inch of its size. That's the size of a, a mustard seed. And what Jesus is saying here is, if you have um, as small as a little faith as, a, as that, you could actually move a mountain. Now, what Jesus is not saying is that if you had big faith, you could do the impossible things. But what Jesus is really saying is that if you engage in the small things, um, even with small faith, with small trust, it could experience exponential change because the cool thing about uh, a must, uh, what a mustard seed does is when it grows and when it develops, when it grows into a tree, it actually becomes, it's 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide. And you see the exponential change of what happens. For example, 
I love the way, um, and, Hen- and Stu uh, shared before, I love the way Henry and the sound team um, just, and their faith in the way they're raising funds for the sound equipment. You know, and their dream of, make, of, of raising over, a mil- actually not over, but $1 million. You know, and it's funny because even though their, their dream was to, is to raise a million dollars, it's cool to see them starting really small. You know, you see them in the fundraisers, you see them uh, raising t-shirts, and you see that little by little, they're raising money to see the equipment that you see right now. You know, you see this giant protector here. You could, I, I could actually see your faces now because it's so bright. And something like the, the piano equipment where we actually have covers. And this is all coming from Henry and the sound equipment. And let me mind you, Henry was the guy that didn't even believe um, in video or video sermons. This is the guy that said and only saw empty chairs. You know, it's coming from a guy that's, and it shows the power of God and the magnitude of what's going on, that something so little, something small, so small over the years became so big. I'll give you another example. I remember a year, uh, a year ago, um, two, of the, two college girls came up to me and started complaining to me. And they're like, Pastor Billy, we have no girls in this church. We have no girls in the, in the college student. This sucks. I'm like, okay. And, he's, and then they started ranting. We were, we were drinking bubble tea, and they're like, all, right, all, the girls get, all the guys get to do this and all that, and they look like they're having fun. We only have like three or four girls in our church. Do something about it. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, what do you want me to do? It's like, first of all, like, I just, it's like, first of all, I'm a guy, and it's sorry, and, and, and I told them the truth. I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to relate to girls. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, that's my limit. And he's like, Pastor Billy, you're the leader, right? You're supposed to do something about it. Do something about it. And I'm just like, oh, boy. <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, God. And as they're like ranting and venting, and the truth of the matter is they have every right to complain and, every, and have every right to feel the frustration of what's gone in the small group about the lack of girls in the church. I was like, you know what, guys? Honestly, I don't know what to do. But one of the things that we can do is just pray. <laughs> That's my last resort, pray. <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, that prayer... I don't think many of us had that much faith. <laughs> it was just three people, but with the little faith that we had, we just came into agreement saying, you know, God, this is the situation. We need more girls in our small group. God, just bring them because you're the only person that could come. And honest to God, I am so surprised because after a year now, there's too many of them. <laughs> and I don't know what to deal with them. And it just shows the power of God and the magnitude of what he does, when you start small and you trust God with the smallness that you have and how you see how big God can really be. And the crazy thing, and this is the reason why, honestly, I think the reason to pray. You know, pray to God, the bigness of God with the small situations or the impossible situations that we have because the small things that we give God and the big situations that we have with the smallness of our faith will result in a big God moving through with a big impact. And what I believe that today, what God wants to encourage all of us to do, and and this is the second point is this, is that God wants to do this. Faith allows you to dream big, but empowers you to start small. And that's the power of faith. The power of faith is God allows you to come with the smallness, the doubts, the uncertainties, and the struggles that you have, that you feel that are impossible, surrendering that to God and allowing a big God to move into your life. You know, I think a lot of times when it comes to our generation, a lot of times um, there's this false cultural lie that everything has to be big and immediate. And we come to this uh, this assumption, and so when things don't come immediately or things are not as grand or big where it's supposed to be, whether it's our life or our career and our faith, we give up automatically. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible says in Zephaniah, it says, God... um, Enjoys your humble and uh, enjoy your humble in your humble beginnings because God loves to relish in the works that you start with. In other words, He enjoys the humble beginnings of what you're doing because He wants to work in those areas where they're small, when um, when you're struggling, where it seems so big, so that God could see, show you how big He really could be in his, in your life, in my life, and that's the work of faith, where God shows you how big and how awesome that he could really be. 
So today, I invite you with the smallness of faith that you have and the struggles and the difficulties that you're experiencing or whatever places that you are in your life to engage with God with the smallness that you have so you could see and your life can be a testimony how big it could be in your life. And so I would ask you guys to just stand with me and let's pray for that. Let's pray that God would open our eyes and make us aware. I feel like a lot of times we're not aware that he is present and the arrows that he's pointing to and the arrows of his direction, not arrows of wounds in this case, but God wants to open our eyes as we trust him. But it's kind of like, you know, pollution. When there's so much pollution or it's like this projector, it's there but we can't see because our vision's not clear or there's obstacles in the way. And whatever they might be, whether experiences of how we think or our assumptions of how we think God should do things or our past experiences of failures or mental, you know, just mental, you know, paralysis of I don't think that it's possible. ask that God would change our history and our direction as we look to him and as we ask him to open our eyes because God is doing the impossible all the time. You know, I heard this quote this week and I first, I, when I heard it, I thought it was kind of, you know, like odd, but the more I thought about it, I realized how true it was. And it was written by um, one of my mentors who's going through stage four cancer and she's going through a recovery. And she actually wrote that um, when you pray for a miracle, you have to be soaked in the wonders of God. So much that you forget all about the problem that you're actually praying for. I'll just say that again. When you pray for a miracle and you pray for God to do things, you have to get lost in his wonder and who he is so much that you even forget the problem that you're praying for. I know logically it doesn't make sense because you're like taking your eyes off the problem that you're praying, but it makes a lot of sense that you begin to engage in who he is. And, you know, I think that a lot of times the impossible in our lives, answer prayers, it happens that way. It's kind of like you give it to God and you're like, oh, you know, and you give it to God. And then it's like a surprise gift that comes out of nowhere. And you know that God's done it. And I believe God's wanting to connect that, recover our faith. It's really the recovery of God, who God is in our lives, right? I love that word recovery. It says everything about who he is. So God, I want to pray that as we sing this, that it would become our prayer, that this song would have meaning more than ever before. And not as a cliche, but God, for real, that you would open the eyes of our hearts and make us aware of your fingerprints, God, and your direction and your, your aim and your, and your personal arrows, God, pointing. your glory, God. And God, bring it all together to the situations and the circumstance and to the places of recovery that is needed, Lord, in our soul, in our experience, in our hearts, God. We look to you. So before we sing this, can we just say, God, I look to you. It's so simple. And just say, God, I look to you and my aim and my focus is on you.
to see you. I want to see you. To see you high, li- high and lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. today, God, into our souls, that we would put our faith in you, that we would become focused on you, God, and Lord, that I, pr- and I pray, God, that we will be surprised by the wonder and the awe of what you can do as we give all things to you, Lord. Father, we want to come before you this afternoon. Will you just all lift your hands with me to God? And will you just, uh, as Pastor Billy spoke to us about this text today, will you go to God and tell him that you believe with your heart that he can do what you don't believe you can do. That's what faith really is. Faith is not about our will or our strength. It's actually an end of our strength, an end of our place. And it looks to God and says, God, I believe you can move in my life. And I think it's important to be able to hear his voice, his whisper. give you the faith to believe that you know that God is with you. Because if you know that God is with you, nothing is impossible. But what Pastor Billy said today, the second point is so powerful. You know, faith gives you the ability to dream big, but empowers you to start small. I think that's very, very critical. Meaning the breakthrough or the miracle is not based on your faith. I think that's very important to understand. That is not our belief that releases the miracle, but it's actually our turning to God that releases the miracle. That relieves the pressure, alleviates the pressure to believe that I have to really will it. Really, you have to let it go. And you give it to God. So right now, as you lift your hands to God, give it to God. Offer it to Him. And believe that God will come through for you. So Father, we thank you today that faith allows us to dream big but it empowers us to start small. And all God's people say, amen. Let's give God a clap offering to the Lord. I'm going to pray for the benediction now, but before we do that, I just want to appreciate, uh, let's give Pastor Billy a hand for giving us that encouraging word today. Let's give him a hand. And uh, Yeah, peeps. And Pastor Billy and our worship team, uh, let's give them a hand for so enc- such an encouraging worship today. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You guys can exit the stage. Uh, Let's bow our heads for the benediction. Lord, I want to pray today uh, as we leave this place 
that you really bless us to be a blessing. The importance of faith is that you told Abraham that through faith that not will he only be blessed, but he'll be a blessing. Not only will he change, but he will eventually change the world. So thank you for the gift of faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. All God's people say, amen. God bless you. Be blessed. We'll see you next week.